Hi everybody. Um, today we are going to do activity 15, which is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing polynomials. Some of this will sound a little familiar, um, but I wanted to make sure that we gave you guys some examples to, and go over this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is adding polynomials. When you are adding polynomials, really all you're doing is just combining your like terms, okay? So the directions say find the sum and write your answers in standard form. Standard form meaning you're going from the um, greatest degree to the lowest degree. So like, <clears throat> for an example, you would write x squared and then x. You want to put x and then x squared, okay? The degree, talking about like that exponent there. Alrighty, so... Um, so there's two different methods to kind of like do this. You can add or uh, horizontally or vertically. This is the same problem for number one. I just want to show you two different ways to do this, all right? So first I'm going to find all my like terms, right? So this is the only x to the third term. So this is going to be by itself. And I like to go and order the degrees just so then I don't have to rewrite it in standard form later. Now my x squared terms, I have positive 2x squared and this is positive 4x squared. So I add the coefficients. 2 plus 4 is 6. <clears throat> x squared. And then um, my x to the first terms, I got negative 5x and positive 2x. That gives me negative 3x. And then I have 7 minus 3, which is 4. Okay? And double check, yep, I have the greatest degree here and my lowest degree is down there, so I am in standard form. All right? Or you could set up this problem vertically, okay? Um, make sure when you set it up vertically, you write the like terms so, uh, so they match each other. So here we have the x squared terms, x terms, and the x to the zero, or you can just say it's not there. So I have my 3x to the third. 2 plus 4 is 6x squared. And this is a negative 5 because of the minus sign. So negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3x. And 7 minus 3 is positive 4. Okay. As you guys can see, we got the same answer both ways. I don't care which method you use. Okay. All right. Subtracting polynomials. Um, first, you want to distribute the negative sign, and then you're going to combine your like terms. So it's very similar to adding. Um, but first you got to distribute that negative. So it says find the difference, write your answers in standard form. We already talked about what standard form is, so I'm not going to go over that again. All right, again, you can do this horizontally or vertically. Um, so this is the problem and then just the two different methods. So I'm going to distribute this negative sign first, okay? So this becomes a negative 5x squared, a positive 4x, and this becomes a negative 6. Now I'm going to combine my like terms, okay? Um, because this like basically just turned into an addition problem. And like, probably a better way to write this would be when I distribute that, this now turns into an addition problem. But that x that um, five x squared is now negative when you distribute it. All right, so now we just combine our like terms. Here's my only x to the third term. X squareds. I got positive eight minus five, so three x squared. I've got x plus 4x, right? Remember, there's a 1 out in front of that x, okay? So 1 plus 4 is 5. And then I've got 10. Remember, this turned into a minus 6, which is positive 4. Okay? All right. Um, vertically, same idea. Distribute that negative sign first. So this becomes plus, minus, plus, and this becomes a minus sign. Okay, so all the signs just change because you're basically multiplying by negative 1. Um, again, look, these like terms are lined up, so it makes it nice and easy. So we have 2x to the third. 8 minus 5 is 3x squared. Um, remember, there's a 1. 1 plus 4 is 5x. And then 10 minus 6 is positive 4. All right, and if you guys can take a look there, we got the same answer, and we are in standard form because we have a highest degree to our lowest degree. All right, so that's adding and subtracting. 
Now we're going to get down to the multiplying. All right. To, multi to multiply any two polynomials, you're going to use the distributive property and multiply each term in the second polynomial by each term in the first, or you can use the box method over here. Then you're going to combine your like terms. So again, there's two different ways that you can do this. I do not care which way you do it. Um, this kind of looks like foiling. Just the reason why we don't call it foil is because we don't have two binomials, which a binomial is when you have two terms here. Notice you have three terms, but it's the same idea as foiling. So for the distributive property here, I'm just going to take this term and multiply it to each of the terms in the second polynomial. So x times x squared is x to the third. x times 4x is positive 4x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. All right. Now I'm going to take, sorry, I want to get a different color pen. Now I'm going to take this 5 and distribute it to each of these terms. So I get plus 5x squared plus 20x minus 25. Alrighty. Then from here, now we're just going to combine our like terms. So um, I only have this x to the third term, so that's by himself. Uh, my x squared terms, uh, 4 plus 5 is 9, so 9x squared. Then I got five, negative 5x and positive 20x, so that's 15x, if I can write 15. And then I just have that minus 25 on the end by itself. All right, so like you guys can see, it's kind of similar to the foiling process. You just have more terms now that we're dealing with, okay? All right, same problem, but now the box method. So the box method, um, you're going to take each polynomial and write one on the top and one on the side. So I put x plus 5 here, and then I put the x squared plus 4x minus 5 along the side here. I could have flip-flopped these. It's just I would have had two boxes here and three across here if I flipped it. So x squared 4x, notice how I put minus 5 because that 5 is a negative, okay? So just be careful when you're setting this up. All right, so x squared times x is x to the third. So yeah, to fill in the boxes, you're going to like multiply those two terms together. So like for an example, if I want to fill out this box, I'm going to do 4x times 5. So that would be 20x. All right? All right, but you can go in order if you want. <laughs> so x squared times 5 is 5x squared. Always write the coefficient first, the number. 4x times x is 4x squared. Um, negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 5 is 25. Now the cool thing about the box method is your like terms line up diagonally. So you can kind of just combine them looking at, or just like looking at the diagonals. And you can always check yourself because the diagonals should be like terms. So I have x to the third, 5 plus 4 is 9, 20 minus 5 is 15, and then I'm left with the 25. Oh, whoops, that should be negative 25, because negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. My bad. See, we make mistakes too. All right, so yeah, that's the multiplying. Again, you can choose whichever method don't care. All right, um, got another example here for you for multiplying. Uh, again, just different problem, but two ways to do this. The distributive property, this one looks a little bit more like the FOIL method, all right, but again, it's really, you're just distributing. So x, x squared times x to the third is x to the fifth, because you add the pollen, or you add the exponents together when you're multiplying by the same base. x squared uh, times 4x is 4x to the third. Negative 1 times x to the third is negative x to the third. Negative 1 times 4x is negative 4x. All right, and then now we just combine like terms. So I have x to the fifth. Whoops. And then my x to the third is 4 minus 1 is positive 3x to the third. And then I just have 4x by itself. Okay. Box method, again, it does not matter which um, 
one you put on the top and which one you put on the bottom, but I put x squared minus one, made sure I put the negative on that one, and x to the third plus four x on along this side. So now I'm gonna fill this in. So x to the third times x squared is x to the fifth. x to the third times negative one is negative x to the third. Four x times x squared is four x to the third. And four x times negative one is negative four x. Notice my like terms, the x to the thirds are diagonal from each other, so now I can just combine my like terms. x to the fifth, four minus one is three, and I have minus four x. Again, write these in standard form, the highest degree to your lowest degree. All right, last thing we're gonna talk about today is dividing polynomials. Um, we are only going to focus on synthetic division for dividing polynomials. Um, synthetic division is a method of polynomial division that is useful when the divisor has the form x minus h. Now this is really important. Okay, notice the x has a coefficient of 1. Okay, or not coefficient, I'm so sorry. Well, yeah, it does have a coefficient of 1, but a degree of 1. Like that can't be x squared. If it says x squared, then you can't use synthetic division. All right, but that is the only method that we're going to focus on anyway. So this is type of problem we would give you on a quiz or a test. So this is a problem in your springboard book uh, of an example. I just wanted you guys to have this so you guys can see the setup. So I'm just going to walk through this real quick. It says divide x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 32 by x minus 3 using synthetic division. Notice this x minus 3 is in that setup. Okay. So your first step is to set up the division problem using only coefficients for the dividend. The dividend is what you are dividing. So that's this guy, okay? Um, and the constant of the divisor, the constant of the divisor, the divisor, real quick, guys, is what you're dividing by, okay? Um, now, the coefficients of the dividend, so the coefficient of x to the fourth would be 1, okay? Notice there's no x to the third term here. There, x to the third is missing, so they filled in a zero. So any time, that's what this next sentence says, include zero coefficients for any missing terms. It's super important. If you forget that zero, you're going to mess up your problem. So that's, it stands in place for x to the third. So this is my x to the fourth, x to the third. Um, negative 13x squared, so negative 13. That's my x squared term. My x term, there is no x to the first, so that's why there's a zero there. And then 32 is the constant. That would be like your x to the zero term. And you still need to include a zero here if there is no constant, okay? So this is the setup. Now, this three, it says, and you're um, going to set up the constant from the divisor. That's just the h value. So if I look at this form, does it make sense that h is three? Okay, so I put that right there. It's almost like... Um, don't confuse that. If that was a plus sign, then we would do ne uh, negative 3. Okay, so if I had x plus 3, here's just like an example off to the side. h would equal negative 3 because you have x minus negative 3 would be that form. Okay, so just be careful with that. All right, then it says bring down the leading coefficient. So we're going to bring that down, bring down the 1. Then it says multiply the coefficient, this guy, by the divisor and write the product here. So when I bring down this one, I do three times one and I get three. Then I add these together. Okay, zero plus three is three. Then I do the process again. Three times three, that number goes there. Okay, so it, it like kind of like goes like this, like a diagonal up and down. All right, and you're going to repeat this process until there's no more coefficients. So, so all the way till you get to the end. All right. And then the numbers in the bottom row become the coefficients of the quotient. All right, let me highlight that part. The number in the last column is the remainder. Write that over the divisor. Okay, so notice I have a coefficient of 1, 3, negative 4, negative 12, and 4. Okay, now I started off with x to the third. Okay, you always want to be one degree less than the divisor. Or, I'm sorry, then the dividend, sorry. Okay, so we you know how we start with x to the fourth? 
Now our final answer has x to the third, and that makes sense because if I do x to the fourth divided by x, I get x to the third, right? So you always want to be one degree less than it. Um, and then you just go in descending order. So x to the third, this would be 3x squared, negative 4x, negative 12. This right here is your remainder. Okay? Um, and that you just write over the divisor, which was the x minus 3. All right, let's do a practice problem doing that. Oh, this math tip over here talks about when the divisor is in the form x plus, um, like, your value, like, I don't know why it says k, but h, all right, same idea. Write it as x minus that value, and then that would be what you're putting out here in front of the box. All right, anyways, let's just do some practice problems now. Okay, so find the quotient using synthetic division. Let's do this. Always check to make sure this is the form x minus h. It is, so we are good to set this up. So my h value here is 4, so I'm going to put that. I like to call it in the little box, okay? And then I write out my coefficients from um, my dividend. So I have x to the fourth, that's a coefficient of 1. x to the third, that's the negative 2. The x squared is negative 15. Um, x to the first is 31. And then negative 12 is my constant. And let me make sure 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Yep, not missing any terms, so I'm good to go. Bring down the 1. Okay, bring down the first uh, coefficient. I multiply these. 4 times 1 is 4. And then I combine, like I add these. So 4 minus 2 is 2. I just continue that process. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 15 is negative 7. Um, 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. 31 minus 28 would be 3. 3 times 4 is 12. And that gives me a 0. Okay? Whenever I get remainder 0, I like to put a smiley face. Because then I, I know I don't have to like worry about writing that divisor. Um, whoops. Then I know I don't have to like write it out like that, the remainder like that. Okay? So... Now I just got to fill in my blanks. So I have 1x to the, I'm going to do to the third because I started off with to the fourth, okay? One, one less than. Um, plus, because that's a positive, 2x squared. This becomes minus 7x plus 3. Okay? And if it helps you, maybe, like, sometimes, so since I know I've had x to the fourth, this would be my x to the third term, x squared x, and that means that would be my constant, okay? So maybe filling it in like that might help too. But that's your final answer. All right? It's kind of fun. Not too bad. All righty. Number two. Um, look, we are dividing by x plus 2. We are in the form, or almost in the form of the x minus h. So this is really x minus negative 2. So I'm going to put negative 2 in my box, okay? And then now we got to set up the coefficients. I have 3, 2, 1, 0, x is 0, so I'm good. I don't have to fill in a 0 anywhere. So now I just got to write on my coefficient. So I have positive 1. That would represent negative 1, 4, and 6, right? 1, negative 1, 4, and 6. Yep. All right, here we go. Okay. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Uh, that gives me a negative 3 when I add those. Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 times uh, negative 2 is negative 20. That gives me negative 14. So here, my remainder was not 0 like it was in number 1, so I have to like do something about that, okay? That's my remainder there. So I started with x to the third, so this means that this is going to be x squared, x, my constant, and then my remainder. So this would be x squared minus 3x, say so it has a negative, plus 10, and you write your remainder as minus because it was negative 14, over what uh, you were dividing by, x plus 2. And you're done. Okay? Alrighty. And the very last problem we got here. Um, check, make sure you inform x minus h. We are, my h value is 1, so I'm going to set this up. 
I have x to the fourth, three, two, uh-oh. I'm missing my x to the first term. So I'm going to plug in a zero there, and then I have my minus six, my constant. All right, so I have negative nine, 10, seven, zero, negative six. Negative nine, 10, seven, missing the x to the first term, negative six. Now I'm good to go. All right. Negative 9 times 1 is negative 9. That gives me 10 minus 9 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 times 1 is 8. 0 plus 8 is 8. 8 times 1 is 8. <laughs> and 8 minus 6 is 2. I'm going to double check my math real quick. Negative 9, 1, 9, 8, 8, 8, 8, 9, 8, 8, 2. Okay, so notice I do have another remainder here on this problem. Okay. So I started with x to the fourth, so that means this is x to the third, x squared, x, that's my constant, that's my remainder. And if for some reason you don't end up with a constant and then like a remainder, even if it's a remainder of zero, then you probably forgot a missing term up, term up there. So just be careful with that. So negative nine x to the third plus x squared. I don't have to put the one right there, but if you want to, that's totally fine. Plus eight x plus eight. plus two over x minus one, because that's what we were dividing by. Alrighty, just double checking. Okay, awesome, yay. All right, go ahead and start your homework. Let us know if you have any questions, guys. See ya.